Please welcome from Epicode, DevOps consultant, Mr. Sakharov. I don't know your name, but maybe you will introduce yourself. Yes, yes. yeah. Applause for them. Yeah. Okay, hello, on my behalf as well. And thank you, Becca, for your presentation. Uh, my name is Sakharov Pesonen, and I come from Epicode. And there's also Sari Sali Tuomo from Net today with me. And we would like to tell you a little bit how to uh, use robot framework with the real world, the real taxable world. Uh, Nets is a company working on payment terminals, and we would like to introduce you to a project we did together about a year ago. Yeah. And today's agenda will go as follows. So first, Sari will tell you about uh, Nets, what they're doing, and what kind of company they are. I will then continue and give you an overview of the project and what kind of solution uh, we get into. And I will then go a little bit more into details of the solution and cover the subsystems of, of the robot itself. Uh, and for the last, there will be a short demo of this. Of and I will now give the stage to Sari and give you the yeah. next. So hello everybody, my name is Sari Salin Tuorilo. I come from a company called NETS. Um, and uh, I'm here to tell you a bit about our challenges with test automation considering the payment uh, terminal software that we put into the payment terminals. Uh, NETS, about, uh, a bit about it in numbers, we have more than 2,500 2, employees. Uh, our headquarters is in Denmark, and we have offices in the Nordics and Baltics. Operation we have actually in 12 different countries. Uh, in Finland, we have our office in Teollisuuskatu, right near here. If you recall, the old Luottokunta that was bought by Nets in 2012. Uh, customers, our customers come from uh, banking sector, public sector, and from businesses of all sizes. For the merchants, I come from a uni business unit called Merchant Services, and particularly IT Merchant Services. So we develop the pro uh, products for the Merchant Service business units. We, we uh, offer solutions for payment, uh, payment transaction handling. Uh, we do acquiring. Uh, we also have solutions based on EM and commerce. And uh, we also have prepaid and vouchers solutions. Uh, we, uh, today I will concentrate on the payment terminal side because the presentation is all about that and automating the testing on the payment terminals. Just to highlight uh, the challenge we have, we have many types of payment terminals, hardware. Uh, these are just an example categories. We have integrated terminals which are used with uh, ECRs, electronic cash registers. We have mobile terminals which can be carried around uh, uh, in the shops, restaurants, etc. And then we have standalone terminals and unattended terminals, which you may have seen, for example, in the parking halls. So, very many types of terminals, but that's not all. We also have quite many uh, different types of software configurations that we install to these terminals. And uh, a good example is that at one point we actually ended up with 51 different software configurations. So, think about testing that manually. <coughs> Of course, you can reduce the, no the amount of testing by not testing everything on every type of ter terminal. But still, we actually ended up uh, in a situation where it was a big, big work. So, we've discussed many times uh, how to automate our testing for the terminals because we use Scrum in our development teams and of course highly appreciated would be to have fast feedback on the product quality. And, uh, but the problem is that there are no ready-made uh, terminal um, uh, automation software off the shelf, so we have to do it ourselves, basically. Uh, security is very high priority in this kind of applications and devices, so even us who create the software, we don't have the regular means to access the terminal so that we can test them throughout properly. And another thing is that we don't want to put there any extra software running on the memory. We want to test the terminal software as it is, like a real user. <coughs> so, what we came up with, <coughs> we wanted to prove that a robot could solve our test automation challenge. Physical robot. 
Um, we had some requirements for the POC, proof of concept that we wanted to build. Uh, it had to be low cost because we didn't want to start up with the industrial standard robot costing tens of thousands of euros. Uh, we, we wanted to utilize open source software as much as possible. We wanted to uh, it to be able to run 24-7, be available all the time, and also low maintenance so that it could run in our desktop <coughs> without uh, major attendance. So we, st we wanted also to start with simple functions uh, like a basic chip online purchase and uh, one, one big requirement was also that it, uh, the robot should be able to test any make or type of terminal independently of the vendor. Uh, we had done some work in the past with Epicode and uh, we started to brainstorming on this POC about the robot and ended up incorporating building the robot. So, as a result today, we approximately had a year a working robot in our test lab uh, executing functional and non-functional testing. Tests, for example, um, uh, memory leakage and uh, it can handle at the moment uh, chip cards, not magnetic stripe or contactless, but those are on our roadmap, so we will definitely uh, develop this solution further. So, that was my part. I'll give the stage to Sakari to actually introduce the solution. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Sari, for motivating the topic. As Sari said, uh, uh, the development of payment terminals requires testing also at the hardware level. So, in other words, testing uh, the payment terminals uh, or, or the software in, in real payment terminals. This is quite interesting problem in the way that we can just hack into the uh, payment terminal and press the buttons and, and hack into the LCD line and read the screen by that way. But we have to actually actually be able to press the real buttons and actually uh, observe the visual changes on, on the screen. Uh, Sari also mentioned that the solution needed to be low cost. Uh, it had to be as open source as possible and it has to be have to be reliable enough to run it in the production environment. Uh, and for this reason, uh, we decided uh, that we should actually do exactly what human users would do. So press the real buttons and look at the screen, uh, but with a robot. Uh, we cho chose to use robot framework as it is a great generic keyword driven framework that is easily extendable with self and uh, ready-made libraries. Uh, integrating uh, the robot framework and the machine vision uh, uh, or the robot and the machine vision to the robot framework allowed us, us to create uh, also easily readable and writable test cases and, and reports. Uh, and we also wanted to run all this uh, from the uh, continuous integration environment. In this game, case, I mean Jenkins, so it would be would be actually useful for the company. And on the picture, you, you can see a glimpse of the solution we come up with. Uh, and for the actual robot, we decided to use a thing called Shapo Code tool. Uh, Shapo Code is quite hard. Word to pronounce, but it is also a open source uh, CNC billing machine uh, made by dependables.com. It is one of the less expensive CNC machines on the market and it comes as a uh, do it yourself kit, so you have to do all the assembly by yourself. But it's, it, it is actually quite easy and also fun to do. Uh, we naturally didn't use the uh, machine. Uh, for the purpose it was designed for, but we, we changed the drill uh, to that kind of uh, pushing tool that resembles a uh, human finger. Uh, we made that using 3D printing techniques and made that from uh, PLA plastic. The robot itself is controlled by Arduino board uh, passing Chico. Uh, Chico is uh, default. Uh, language for, for this type of NC or numerical control machines. Uh, 
And on top of that, there is Raspberry Pi to control all of this. So Raspberry Pi is running uh, Robert Failer and all the other libraries. And Raspberry Pi is, is then sending uh, the control commands uh, over USB line in just serial communication. Uh, we created a Robot Framework library for the machine control and then uh, open sourced it. So it's now openly available to everyone who would like to use this type of thing. Um, and this allowed us uh, to control the machine on slightly higher level than just sending some cryptic G code. But, but we could create keywords like press 1 and then robot would press button 1 on that famous terminal. Uh, as the G-code is, is uh, quite default language for, for this type of machines, uh, this library can be also used uh, with other types of, of uh, NC machines, so it hasn't... Uh, you can use, use also other types of, types of machines than just shape or code. Uh, the working area of the robot can be populated with maximum of three different table journals at one time. Uh, so you can, for example, run test, test uh, for, for different payment channels at, at the same time and in this way you speed up the testing process. And then for the computer vision part, so as I mentioned we had to also read the screen uh, and validate that the payment channels is is saying what it should say. Uh, on the bottom of the Raspberry Pi, there is uh, Raspberry Pi's own camera model. It's quite more small, so so it's quite hard to see what is in there. Uh, it proven to be quite quite good for this purpose, as it is really small. It has a uh, fixed focal length, so so. It, doesn't take time for, for example, out processing and, and stuff like that. Uh, for the software part, we, we decided to use uh, <coughs> Tesla OCR engine. It is a text recognition engine made by HP Labs and Google. <coughs> and it works in a way that, that you give a image to the Tesla engine and it, it then returns uh, a textual presentation of, of the image. So, if there would be, for example, that kind of uh, text in the uh, in the image, the test would, would uh, return the found text in in a stream format. Uh, the computer vision is e efficient enough that OCR uh, test case execution and all the other stuff uh, could be run on just one single Raspberry Pi, uh, and this is uh, really great because those are actually really cheap, so one Raspberry Pi costs just like 40 bucks or so. <coughs> uh, we also created Robot Framework Library uh, for, all this, for all this, but it was made uh, more like for this specific purpose, so we didn't put it in, in the public yet. Uh, but if you know, if you can go to, for example, Python, it is quite easy to uh, do all this by yourself uh, with commonly available libraries. Mm -hmm. And on the right, uh, yeah, as I said, there is the camera and, and there is a picture of, of uh, image that is uh, processed by, by the algorithm, so we are we are doing uh, some thresholding mm, to make the uh, <coughs> uh, script work uh, more efficient and uh, speed uh, uh, calculations <laughs> it is doing. Yeah. And for the final uh, part of the robot, uh, we have to also uh, be able to. Uh, insert the card and remove the card uh, from the payment terminal. So 
these uh, card readers are also uh, 3D printed from PLA plastic. Uh, we used standard hobby servos that are commonly available to do the movement. Uh, and there is also a separate uh, Arduino board uh, for both <coughs> of those uh, servos. And it is again controlled over USB by serial communication. Uh, there can be maximum of three of those uh, uh, card feeders at the same time as, as there can be also three different table channels at the same time on the robot. And for this, we also made the external robot framework library. And this allowed us again uh, kind of high level, level of control. Uh, we could just say insert card uh, in the test case and it would then push the cards to the payment terminal. <coughs> It's, it is quite small, small picture, but, but you will get to see it in, in action in our demo in just a second. Okay, and now let's take a look at the example test case uh, for this, this robot. Uh, the idea is to make test cases uh, as human readable as possible and as self explaining as possible. So there is no need for comments uh, almost at all. So if you are just reading uh, the test steps, you can you can pretty much uh, say exactly uh, what the machine would do. Um, and this means you don't necessarily need prior coding experience to write new test cases or even edit them, edit the, the old ones. Uh, so let's go this through. Uh, on top of the, there is just some settings. So I'm basically importing uh, my resources. Uh, my keywords are explained on that resource.txt file. Uh, and then there is that uh, test teardown. So if anything breaks and, and the test fails in some, some point, uh, the card would be, for example, removed and the machine would go to the home position and close connection. Uh, and in that way, it uh, initialize itself so other tests could, could come from there. And the actual test case can be seen on below. It is named uh, test in value screen code. And we are testing that the uh, terminal uh, works correctly when we are uh, entering uh, so first, uh, we just validate that the terminal is in uh, initial state. So it, said, it says terminal ready on the screen, and we use the screen to contain text keyword and give arm and terminal ready. And then we're going to uh, enter uh, 20 euro price to the terminal, and we are pressing buttons two, zero, zero, and once more, zero. And then we are again validating that the screen contains uh, that price we just entered. So screen should contain as 20.00. Uh, then we are pressing green, and, and, and the terminal uh, should reply as that <coughs> insert card. And then we are again validating that the <coughs> card text can be found on the screen. But then insert the card, uh, entering uh, wrong pin code, so one, two, three, four, and try to move forward by pressing B. And then the payment terminal should uh, reply that <coughs> the payment was declined because the pin was invalid. And we again validate that the declined shows up in the screen. Then we remove card and uh, validate that the terminal uh, gets back to the initial state. So there is a terminal ready reading on the screen. Yeah, and let's move on to the, to the actual demo of this hall. So Nets made us uh, a video of, of this in action. So let's see. So 
test the Arduino controlling the robot. There you can see those card feeders in action. Okay, thank you. That was our presentation. And if you have any questions, uh, I think me and Sally are more than happy to answer you now. Hi, uh, what kind of failures or information do you get about the actual robot device? I was thinking that that's like a, no human operates the machine like that. So I was wondering what kind of information do you get by doing the actual robot? Well, we are. Well, that is true that, that human would, would, for example, react slightly quicker also, but we are still actually pressing those buttons. So, yeah, that's the main motivation for, for the project. And we are, we are actually observing the screen, so we don't, for example, uh, read the LCD uh, line, as I said, but we are, we are observing that, that human would see those uh, changes also. Yeah. Any more questions? Do you need any kind of uh, high speed camera or anything how you can uh, check how, how quickly that transfer to the, your pushing to the button? Uh, well, for this project, we are use, using that just that uh, Raspberry Pi's own camera model. And there is also a um, thing that, well, if I back up a bit, uh, the camera is bottom uh, on. On the bottom of that uh, black box over there, I don't know if you can see. see. But we had to also run uh, the robot to the position where, where it can read the screen, so it, it cannot read the screen all the time. So, in, for this reason, we, we cannot observe uh, really uh, quick changes on the screen. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to add to that, that no, we don't need high speed camera there. So even though this is a proof of concept that we might end up with a more sophisticated robot, we do not measure anything like frame rates or something like that. It's not a purpose for failure to turn on. Yeah, it should be because I enjoy using sets. Uh, even kind of, <laughs> I don't okay, I don't enjoy ever paying, <laughs> but still the user experience could be even faster. In some some okay, did I or did, you know that's so far we, we do that uh, in a different way. For example, we get a unit belonging to <coughs> from the terminal that we check the timestamps if we need to check the response times. 